Europa has an ocean. Europa actually has twice the amount of water that Earth does. Water covers 71% of the Earth's surface and is also essential for life. We see so much water around us all the time that it's hard to think about how the rest of the solar system isn't blessed with the same abundance of the resource. But in reality, that's how it is. Researchers have looked far and wide, trying to find some sort of evidence of water anywhere in our galaxy. And well, it's finally happened. NASA just announced that the James Webb Telescope has detected not just water, but an ocean on Jupiter's moon, Europa. And this revolutionary discovery changes the way scientists have looked at space as a whole. Join us as we dig deeper into this discovery and how it's affecting the world of science as a whole. Jupiter isn't just a regular planet. It's basically one of the most fascinating giants in our solar system. With a diameter of 143,000 kilometers, it towers over our planet, being almost 11 times larger in size. To put Jupiter's volume in perspective, it's estimated to be over 1,431 times bigger than Earth's volume, showcasing its colossal nature. In fact, its size is so massive that it exceeds the combined volume of all the other planets in our solar system. That also means that it's got a powerful gravitational field too, exerting a pull that is over two and a half times stronger than Earth's gravity. Jupiter's gravitational pull is a force to be reckoned with. With a gravity of approximately 24.79 meters per second square, more than double that of Earth, it significantly affects the behavior of objects and potential visitors to the planet. This immense gravitational force also plays a crucial role in shaping Jupiter's dynamic atmosphere and intriguing weather patterns, including its iconic bands of clouds and swirling storms, most notably the Great Red Spot. But one of the most intriguing things about Jupiter is its sheer number of moons. In total, Jupiter has an impressive count of 80 moons, with 57 officially recognized by the scientific community. The remaining 23 moons are awaiting confirmation and formal naming by the International Astronomical Union, but soon those two will be official moons. Among Jupiter's vast moon collection, the four largest moons hold a special status known as the Galilean moons. These moons, Lo, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto were independently discovered by Galileo Galilei and Simon Marius in 1610, marking a pivotal moment in the history of astronomy. The Galilean moons stand out not only for their historical significance, but also for their substantial size. In fact, they rank among the largest objects in our solar system, surpassing even known dwarf planets in terms of mass. So it's safe to say that these guys are huge, the innermost Galilean moons, Europa and Ganymede, exhibit a fascinating orbital resonance with each other. This means that their orbital periods follow a harmonic relationship, with Ganymede completing its orbit twice for every one orbit of Europa, and Io orbiting four times within the same duration. This adds a touch of celestial harmony to Jupiter's moon system. Jupiter's moon population extends beyond the Galilean quartet, it's estimated that Jupiter harbors around 100 irregular moons with diameters exceeding one kilometer, along with an additional 500 smaller retrograde moons with diameters as small as 0.8 kilometers. These irregular moons often possess irregular shapes due to their weaker self-gravitational forces, showcasing the diverse forms present in Jupiter's moon family. Each of Jupiter's moons exhibits unique characteristics in terms of size, composition, and geological features. Ganymede is the largest moon in our entire solar system, making it a true giant among moons. Its substantial dimensions contribute to its status as an intriguing world to explore and study. But Europa is where things take an interesting turn. As the sixth largest moon in the entire solar system and the fourth largest satellite of Jupiter, Europa holds a significant place in the world of science. One of the most unique features of Europa is its remarkably smooth surface. In fact, it actually has the smoothest surface of any solid body in the entire solar system, so there's a distinct lack of rugged terrain or prominent features, which is usually what you'd see on most of the planets in the solar system like Mars. Despite its generally smooth appearance, Europa's topography exhibits intriguing patterns. The moon's highest peaks, 
although relatively few in number, reach heights of only a few hundred meters. This modest elevation adds to the subtle beauty of Europa's surface, where the presence of large craters is rare, hinting at an active and dynamic geological history. But it gets even more interesting. You see, Europa has a tidally locked rotation, meaning that one face of the moon is permanently fixed toward Jupiter. Tidal locking happens when the gravitational forces between two celestial bodies cause one side of a moon to always face its parent planet, in this case, Jupiter. This means that as Europa orbits around Jupiter, it rotates on its axis in such a way that the same side of the moon constantly points toward the gas giant. Unlike our moon, that's changing all the time. This phenomenon creates a distinctive environment on Europa. The perpetual opposition of one face of the moon to Jupiter leads to a stark contrast in surface conditions between the leading and trailing hemispheres. The leading hemisphere faces the direction of Europa's motion around Jupiter, experiencing higher tidal forces, while the trailing hemisphere faces away from the direction of motion, experiencing much lower tidal forces. The tidal forces exerted by Jupiter caused the deformation and flexing of Europa's interior. That's because there's constant stretching and squeezing due to these tidal forces generating heat within the moon, a process known as tidal heating. This tidal heating plays a crucial role in maintaining Europa's geological activity and shaping its characteristic features. Compared to Earth's moon, Europa is slightly smaller in size. It's believed to have a layered structure that consists of an iron core, a rocky mantle, and a remarkable feature that no one saw coming, a vast ocean of salty water beneath its icy crust. This subsurface ocean is estimated to be incredibly deep, ranging from approximately 40 to 100 miles, making it several times deeper than Earth's oceans. The subsurface ocean of Europa is believed to harbor an astonishing amount of water, estimated to be around twice the volume of Earth's combined oceans. This vast reservoir of liquid water holds great significance, as water is a fundamental ingredient for life as we know it. The potential habitability of Europa's ocean has made it a prime target for further exploration and investigation. But how can we even be sure that there's an actual ocean on the moon? Multiple lines of observation and scientific research have come together to dig deeper to confirm its existence, particularly data from the Hubble Space Telescope and later on the James Webb Space Telescope strongly suggests the existence of a global ocean beneath Europa's ice. Plus, spectroscopic measurements play a crucial role in studying Europa's composition and understanding the nature of its surface and its connection to the subsurface ocean. This technique involves carefully analyzing the light reflected or emitted by Europa across a range of wavelengths, providing valuable information about the chemical and physical properties of the moon's surface materials. When the spectral signatures of Europa are carefully examined, scientists can detect the presence of water ice, which is abundant on the moon's surface. Water ice is a key component, indicating the prevalence of frozen water in the form of ice crystals or ice grains. The identification of water ice is significant because it implies the existence of a water source that may extend beyond the surface layer. In addition to water ice, spectroscopic measurements have revealed the presence of salts on Europa's surface. These salts are thought to originate from the subsurface ocean, as they could have been brought to the surface through processes such as cryovolcanism or geologic activity. That's not all. Spectroscopic analysis has also indicated the presence of organic molecules on Europa's surface. Organic molecules consist of carbon-based compounds and are the literal building blocks of life. That's why it's so important to study the specific spectral signatures of different materials. With that, the researchers can gain insights into the composition, distribution, and properties of Europa's surface. They can determine the relative abundances of various compounds and identify variations in their spatial distribution. Spectroscopic measurements are typically conducted using instruments aboard spacecraft that pass by or orbit Europa. Analyzing the reflected sunlight or thermal emissions from the Moon's surface helps scientists obtain detailed spectra that reveal the unique fingerprints of different materials. These measurements are then compared to laboratory experiments and theoretical models to interpret the composition and physical properties of Europa's surface materials. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. 
spacecraft missions, such as NASA's Galileo, have also provided significant data on the magnetic field of Europa, which takes the evidence of the ocean one step further. These measurements reveal the existence of a magnetic field surrounding the Moon, suggesting the presence of a conductive fluid within its interior. The leading hypothesis is that this conductive fluid is a salty water ocean, which interacts with Jupiter's powerful magnetic field and generates the observed magnetic signature. Researchers have studied in detail the strength, orientation, and variations in the magnetic field to estimate the ocean's depth, extent, and even its potential salinity. The measurements also provide insights into the dynamics and circulation patterns within the ocean, such as the presence of currents and the interaction with the icy shell above. On top of all of that, magnetic field data can help also scientists understand the Moon's internal structure and processes. It provides clues about the conductivity and composition of the subsurface materials, revealing the nature of the boundary between the ocean and the rocky core of Europa. The magnetic field measurements also contribute to studying the Moon's geophysical activity, such as tectonic movements or hydrothermal vents, which may be driven by the interactions between the ocean and the Moon's interior, and it doesn't stop there. The utilization of thermal instruments and sensors also plays a vital role in the scientific investigation of Europa, specifically in studying the temperature distribution across its surface and estimating the temperature of the subsurface ocean. These innovative tools are necessary to capture the heat signatures and observe thermal variations, which in turn provide valuable insights into the complex energy exchanges taking place between the vast ocean and the icy crust of Europa. When they measure these thermal properties in so much detail, they can refine their models and further comprehend the internal heat flow and thermal stability within Europa's intriguing planetary body. Through these comprehensive thermal measurements, a clearer understanding of the dynamic processes that are constantly working underneath the surface of Europa can be achieved. Surface imaging and mapping also come in to add more detail to the information we can gather about the ocean in question here. Through the application of advanced high-resolution imaging techniques and precise mapping methodologies, scientists are able to dig deep into what Europa's surface is really like. And meticulously analyzing these detailed images helps researchers learn more about the intricate fractures, ridges, and various geological structures that might hold significant clues about the water. This is an integral part of the process of mapping Europa's enigmatic landscape. By systematically documenting and charting the distribution and extent of these geological formations, scientists can develop comprehensive maps that unveil the hidden secrets of the subsurface ocean. Each image captured and each geological feature identified contributes to a more refined understanding of the Moon's complex internal dynamics. But that's not the most important part here. Surface imaging and mapping play a pivotal role in identifying potential sites of interest for future exploration missions. Right now, we might just be sticking to using instruments like the James Webb Space Telescope, but in the future, probes or even humans might make their way onto the surface. And that can't be done unless we've learned everything we possibly can from a distance. By learning about areas of particular scientific significance, such as regions with active geological activity or areas where the icy shell may be thinner, scientists can prioritize these locations for further investigation. These images serve as a visual guide, guiding the path for future missions to Europa. NASA is already preparing for upcoming missions dedicated to unraveling the mysteries of Europa. Among these highly anticipated missions is NASA's Europa Clipper. This is a groundbreaking NASA mission scheduled to launch in October 2024 and aims to unravel the mysteries of Europa. Its main mission is to determine the potential habitability of the underground ocean. Rather than orbiting Europa itself, the spacecraft will be in orbit around Jupiter, strategically maneuvering to make approximately 40 to 50 close flybys of Europa. This flight path is adjusted for each encounter, so the spacecraft can scan pretty much the entire moon, gathering detailed measurements and data. The primary objective of the Europa Clipper mission is to investigate whether Europa harbors conditions conducive to supporting life, although it is not specifically designed to detect life itself. The mission focuses on identifying regions below Europa's icy surface that may offer a suitable environment for life to thrive. 
As of right now, scientists are as certain as they can be about there being a subsurface ocean of liquid water beneath Europa's crust. But the spacecraft will perform an in-depth analysis to assess the potential habitability. Equipped with a sophisticated scientific payload, the Europa Clipper mission is well prepared to conduct an extremely thorough investigation. The spacecraft will carry a bunch of advanced instruments specifically designed to gather crucial data and lead the way for there to be detailed studies of Europa's surface and subsurface. These instruments will capture detailed measurements, analyze the moon's magnetic field, study surface temperatures, investigate the thickness and composition of the icy crust, and provide a comprehensive understanding of Europa's intriguing characteristics. Basically, everything we've been doing from a distance, but up close. Over the course of its 3.5-year mission, the Europa Clipper will conduct 44 flybys of Europa, ranging from altitudes of 25 to 2,700 kilometers. Each flyby will offer an opportunity to collect vital information and further explore the moon's potential habitability, sometimes from a completely new angle, other times just to build upon data it's already gathered. With all of the data that's gathered from this mission, scientists hope to unlock the secrets hidden beneath Europa's icy facade and gain a deeper understanding of this intriguing celestial body. The Europa Clipper mission holds great promise in expanding our knowledge of potentially habitable environments in our solar system and bringing us closer to answering profound questions about the existence of life beyond Earth. Maybe there's a whole civilization hiding under the ice, but we'll have to wait for the Europa Clipper to actually get a confirmation. So what do you think? Is it really possible? Let us know in the comments below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this. We'll see you in the next one.